Do you use, or are you considering using, Sage Intact as your ERP? Asset Account is a best of breed fixed assets depreciation engine that integrates seamlessly with Sage Intact. This includes syncing unlimited dimensions for one-click journaling to the general ledger. When you first log in to Asset Accounter, this is the screen you will be welcomed to. And you can achieve this screen from any time within the application simply by clicking on the Asset Accountant logo in the top left corner. What this is showing you is the organisation that you belong to and the registers, the fixed asset registers that you have access to. So there'll, there may only be one in some circumstances or you may have many if you have multiple access points. All I need to do is click onto here and you're given a rolled up view of the fixed asset register. So what I'm going to show you is just give you a little bit of a walk around. On the left hand menu are your access points to low value pools. You can import assets, draft assets and journals, which I'll explain in a moment, and settings, register settings and so forth. We can search, well before I show you search, on the left hand side these are the asset groups that exist. The ones that you see here are nothing out of the ordinary. You, asset Accounted is fully extensible. You can choose as many as you like and group your assets however you like. The number to the right of each asset group is the number of assets that is found within each one. And say, for example, machinery and equipment, if I just click on there, the down arrow just gives us all of the individual assets that belong under that asset group. The asset groups can be edited with default depreciation rates and effective lives through using the edit group function, which I won't show you in this demonstration, but just know it's there for if you play with this in your demonstration account. Searching for assets. Now, Asset Accountant can efficiently handle asset registers effectively with an unlimited number of assets, quite literally millions of assets. So we do have quite a detailed search functionality, which you can access here or here and really easy to use. Just search for a server, for example, and in this register we've got four. You can add filters to search by group, or in this case we've got some profit centers. You can search by location. You can always clear that and search for any asset in a register. Up the top here, we can switch from a tax view to accounts view at any time, which brings up our two regimes, and as you can see, almost instantly. And we're currently viewing in this period, Asset Account allows you to view your asset register any period, past, present, or future. And there are some really easy ways to do this by period, year to date, or even in the whole financial years. On the top here, we can export any view into an Excel spreadsheet. We know accountants really love to manipulate data, so we do enable that. Any view that you are in, you can export the data. We can add an import, which I'll explain in a moment, and reports. Very, uh, We've got all reports that you're used to and would expect. So for example, asset summary, group summary, disposals and acquisitions, and forecasting. And just remember that you can set whatever period of time, even a bespoke period of time, a custom period, a standard period, totally up to you. And that data can be extracted into a PDF or a CSV file. Um, I'm going to show you an existing asset before I show you how to add an asset. So just for the purpose of the demonstration, I have an asset that is called widgets. Now what you are seeing here is the view of this particular asset. Tax, accounts, details, we can got some actions, we can delete if we reverse various things, we can reverse certain events that are applicable to an asset, we can edit it. We can do a whole lot of things. But first of all, we can have a look at our tax, and this shows that it, this particular asset is set for seven years diminishing value, but for accounts, it's prime cost seven years, so the differing rates, and therefore the differing depreciation. What you're looking at down here is just all of the depreciation by period ever since the asset was first purchased on the 25th of July 2019. Again, you can export your data however you see fit. Various actions you can do, you can add components. So say for example, you've got a motor vehicle and you add a CB radio to it. I don't know, some really fancy CB radio and you want to depreciate it differently, but have a parent-child relationship, that is totally possible. 
or you might have $30,000 spent for 30,000 widgets. You can add an opening quantity and then in the future you can sell right off this asset in full or partially. So you might want to sell 5,000 of 30,000 widgets and show all of your depreciation numbers accordingly. Details of the asset classifications. So we've got some cost centers set up here. You can transfer in between. The cost center for this demonstration register is by capital city. This can be split up by as many classifications as you need, or you might have projects, however you want to split the data up for your journals. Custom fields can be added. So um, you might like to add a serial number or a license number that is easily added. And also attachments can easily added, whether it's a file, might be a warranty or a invoice or an, even a picture image of your particular asset or a barcode, that is all totally possible. And you can add a link, say, to a document management system if you use SharePoint or something like this. So really, really easy to use. And we've got various other things you might like to do. You can reassess, you can transfer to a pool if you're using a tax pool. You can adjust for either depreciation or opening balance dates. And you can also add different taxable use. So the default is 100%, but you might choose to have an asset that's 80% depreciable. When demonstrating how Sage Intact and Asset Accountant work together, I'll be showing you three things here. The integration itself and the setting up of the chart of accounts so that you can post journals with one click, classifications and dimensions support, and adding an asset via the draft assets mechanism straight from accounts payable. So when we go to register settings in Asset Accountant, this is the screen that you will be greeted with. And we've got a few tabs up the top. If we go to integrations, you are given the option here to log in to Sage Intact. So let us connect to Sage Intact with our credentials. And then we choose the entity. We'll just use this one for the demonstration and connect. And here we are. We are now connected to Sage Intact. You can choose which journal that you're posting to. We will select just a general journal in this particular example. Now that we're actually set up and integrated with Sage Intact, I'll show you how to enable journaling. You might recall that our asset groups are run down the left-hand side on the main screen. Let us just visit any one of those and scroll down to the settings, general ledger accounts. We're connected to Sage Intact. If we edit this, we can nominate which accounts map asset accountant to where we're posting the journals. So this interrogates the chart of accounts in Sage Intact. Very simple to do, save. Each asset group needs to be configured as such. The other thing that I'll show you is syncing classifications. So this is where dimensions are synced. So you can see we've got some that already exist in Asset Accountant. You may have none when you set this up for the first time, but the process is the same. So click on Sync with Sage Intact Dimensions. Now let us say we just want Department, Location and Project and all the other ones we don't want for journals. Save and Next. Sage Intact has Department, Admin Services, Sales, IT and Marketing and we make sure they are reflected in Asset Account. If it's not there, we've got the option to create a new one. So let us go to Next, Location. We can see that they all map. Save and Next. And this is Project. So Project doesn't exactly or doesn't exist in Asset Account right now. So let us say we only want uh, Project B, Project A, and Project X and Project Z. So let us go ahead and you'll see that Asset Accountant will then create that. And here we go here. So we've mapped Department, Location and Project is a new one. So these will be added. And it is as simply the process of clicking Save and now you can see that these dimensions are now synced with Sage Intact. The next item I want to show you is Actually, there's three ways of adding assets in Asset Accountant. There's doing it directly through the interface by adding an asset. You can import using a CSV file that have all the information of every asset 
ready to import and be brought straight into the register. Or when you're integrated with Sage Intact, we've got this wonderful function called Draft Assets. If you click on that, these are all of the assets that have been added into Accounts Payable that have not yet been added into Sage Intact. And you can view all of these here. And let us say we want to add this cattle feeder into Asset Accountant. It is as simple as now adding in whatever code you like. You can just put feeder, whatever you like. Group, we'll put it in machinery and equipment. The purchase cost and the date and first use are brought in from Sage Intact. This is where we can map some dimensions. Well, admin doesn't really make sense. Let's uh, call it services. Employee, if that's relevant. Site, customer. Well, that's probably not relevant. Let's say this is in Brisbane and it's Project X. You might recall that's the one we just set up. Custom fields can be added, but we can run into that some other time. And then it is as easy as saving. That asset is now integrated into the asset register, which you can find by just doing a simple search. And there's our cattle feeder that has been brought in. Just very briefly show you how to add an asset from the interface. I'll just get rid of this. So we might just call this test asset. You can allocate a code. So we might have a fixed asset code here. This is a test asset and whatever you type in the description will always be added as an audit or at the opening balance of the asset. We might choose to add this to machinery and equipment. It cost $10,000 and let's just say we purchased it on today's date. We can add a quantity if we like. Let's say there was a uh, thousand units at $10 each. We can say these exist in Melbourne. We can even use, I don't know, a user and we might say um, Dougie is, is the user here. This is where we can set the tax depreciation and the accounts depreciation, a residual value if you like. You can always add notes. A really handy tool for looking up tax for anybody in or adding any assets into asset account is we have a very handy lookup tool. So if we wanted to look up server, which was the example before, we are interrogating the ATO's tax guide here and we can insert whichever one is most relevant to us. So we might say a server for radio broadcasting and six years at 33.33% as well as the notation that it's from table reference 2021-3 table A. That will again be forever attached to the asset. It's as simple as saving the asset and it is now in our fixed asset register. And I will just show you here. We'll search for this asset, test, there we are, comes up in the details there. Well, I'll show you the low value pool. I set this register up to have a low value pool. Just very briefly, we can see any transactions, opening assets, closing assets. We're in the financial year 2021 here. So we're showing which ones were transferred to the pool. Um, and also closing assets that exist in the pool at the end of financial year 2021. And asset account is also intuitive so that at the beginning of every financial year or whenever you like, we asset account will show you however many assets have met the criteria to be able to be transferred into the pool. And it is as simple as clicking transfer. This asset then, the Fridge Westinghouse, is now in the low value pool. For tax, you can see here, transferred to the low value pool. But if I go into accounts, you'll see that it is still depreciating merrily and will exist in the reports for accounts purposes. The last thing we'll show you quickly is how to post journals to Sage Intact. Now, remembering that you have set up each of your asset groups with the, with the balance sheet and the profit and loss items for where the credits and debits to post, it is just a matter of going to journals and creating a new one. Let's create one for the current period. And here we are. So on the left hand side, are each of the asset groups, the account type, GL type, these are the dimensions and the debit and credits appropriate for each dimension. And it really is just a matter of clicking post to Sage Intact. There are all sorts of things you can post here, revaluations, impairments, adjusters, adjustments, leases. But for the demo, let's just do depreciation post and we should get a green tick to let us know that that has been posted. And that is now done. There's nothing more to do for this period 
in Asset Accountant or Sage Intact. So that is a general overview of how Asset Accountant and Sage Intact integrate and make fixed asset depreciation and journaling really, really easy.